Greetings all time travelers, villain aficionados, and fellow nerds. Are you ready to get your minds blown with some futuristic evil? My name is AJ with Top 10 Nerd, and today I've compiled a list of the top 10 villains who come from the future. And let me tell you, they didn't come all the way to the present just to play nice. So buckle up, grab a glass of your favorite time traveling beverage, and let's dive into the twisted world of future baddies. At number 10, we have the Maestro. This time traveling alternate reality version of the Hulk is only number 10 on this list because I just couldn't wait to talk about him. You see, of all the countless versions of the Hulk, the Maestro is definitely the most nihilistic. After the Earth was devastated by nuclear war, the Hulk, whose personality is fully integrated with that of Bruce Banner, by the way, has decided to turn against humanity and rule over what was left of society with an iron fist. You see, Banner recognized that even after fighting on behalf of ordinary people against superhuman threats, it was ordinary people who who ultimately destroyed the world. So as you can tell, this future Hulk has a very bleak outlook on life. But Banner wasn't satisfied merely being the maestro of dystopia. So after tricking Spider-Man 2099 into fixing Doctor Doom's time machine, he was able to come back to the present and duke it out against his younger self. If you're enjoying the video so far, please support Top 10 Nerd by pressing like, subscribing to the channel, and ringing that notification bell. Because if this video doesn't turn out well, I might just become a time traveling villain myself. You've been warned. At number 9 we have Armagon. Armagon is an anthropomorphic mutant shark on steroids from the future. You know, I never thought I'd hear myself say those words in that order. And it's thanks to sentences like this one that make me love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But before he teamed up with Shredder and Verminator X to face off against the turtles, his battle in the Mighty Mute Animals sees him successfully defeating Murdude and Man Ray. And even though Man Ray's never met the shark, Armagon tells him that they fought against each other in his own past, which would be Man Ray's future. Yep. That's time travel for you. A feat that he's able to achieve thanks to an invention that he stole from a future version of Donatello, and in the end it took the combined might of all the Teenage Turtles, Master Splinter, Ninjara, plus the future versions of Raphael and Donatello to defeat the shark. At number 8, Lord Havoc. In the beginning, Lord Havoc was just a DC knockoff to Marvel's Doctor Doom, appearing alongside many obviously inspired characters. But as time went on, Havoc became a distinct enemy loved by the fans. The Prince of Cravia was cast out of his royal and guardian family on account of his hemophilia, which is a pretty harsh thing for his parents to do considering they gave it to him. So Alexei solved both problems at once by selling his soul in exchange for metal skin, allowing him to claim the throne by force. This was just the first of many impressive feats that would make his name notorious across many universes and continuities, including defeating the Retaliators and the Future Family, the DC counterparts to the Avengers and the Fantastic Four respectively. And he even wields the weapons of the heroes he's defeated, from the Thunderer's Axe to the Crusader's Shield, and I'm sure you don't need me to tell you who those two are supposed to be. But Havoc is a bit of a change of heart after fighting Batman on Earth Prime. See, after Batman sacrifices himself to restore the planet of Angor, along with all of the lives that were lost under Havoc's rule, Lord Havoc decides to take Batman's place and be sacrificed himself, refusing to allow anyone else to fulfill his responsibility to Angor. You hear that guys? This supervillain based off Doctor Doom has a better moral code than the lot of you. Well, those of you who aren't subscribed that is. At number 7 we have Strife. While we all know Cable is the time traveling super soldier sent to the past to prevent his dystopian future, like most superheroes, Cable himself has a clone, who chooses to go by the name of Strife. He was created after a young Cable contracted a lethal virus, leading his mother to clone him out of fear that he wouldn't survive. Cable did survive by the way, which would have made things a little awkward if not from an attack by Apocalypse. The original Cable was taken out of the room just before Apocalypse's arrival, leading him to believe that the clone left behind was the original. Apocalypse then abducted the clone, raising the infant himself, with the intention of claiming the boy's body once his own had grown too old and feeble. But when the time came for Strife to be possessed by Apocalypse, it was revealed that he was a clone and therefore unworthy. This discovery made Strife go mad, determined to redeem himself by proving that Cable was in fact the clone. And when he failed to do that too, he turned on Cable, attempting to break the man by any means necessary. At number 6, Solaris. The artificial and sentient star was created in the far future as a secondary sun in the orbit of Uranus, which helps warm the now inhabited outer planets of the solar system. But that wasn't its original purpose. In fact, Solaris is detrimental to causing his own creation, as he was invented in order to counteract an organic technovirus which his future self created and sent backwards in time. The virus itself secretly containing Solaris's core programming, though before he could properly organize himself, 
himself enough to take offensive action, he was defeated and banished to the outskirts of the galaxy thanks to a sacrifice made by Starman of the 853rd century. But this wouldn't stop Solaris from returning to plague the Earth, or more specifically Superman, as he would ruthlessly attack the Man of Steel and all of his descendants until he would eventually become known as the greatest enemy of the Superman dynasty. At number 5, Future Man. How could I make a list about villains of the future without mentioning Future Man? In the far future of the year 1 million AD, the world's oceans have evaporated leaving the human race on the brink of extinction. And so Future Man, whose real name is never revealed, volunteered to travel back in time to the 20th century with a plan to exterminate the human race in that era so that he and his people of the future could inhabit the present on an undisturbed earth. And he attempts to accomplish this mission using some very doofenshmirtz-esque gadgets and plans, including including but not limited to plague carrying bombs, a slow motioninator, that's not a joke, a tsunami inducing torpedo, a machine that resurrected ancient Egyptian mummies, attempting to literally set the USA on fire using an atomic match, and setting off neutronic bombs just to name a few. Eventually he was defeated when he was sent to the ancient past in a broken time machine, stranding him there with no way of returning. At number 4 is Walker Slogan. Now this next villain didn't originate in the pages of comic books. Instead, he was first introduced in the 2011 video game Spider-Man Edge of Time, a game I have very fond memories of. Well, except for the battle against the future Black Cat, because I was stuck on that boss for like a year. Don't judge me, okay? I was 9. Anyways, Walker is the head of the Temporal Physics Lab at Alchemex in the year 2099. Now the timing of his research culminating in the creation of his time gate coincided with Alchemex's inevitable takeover by Stark Fujikawa. With nothing to lose, Walker used his time machine to book himself a one-way ticket to the year 1970, where he used his futuristic knowledge to start up Alchemex long before it was supposed to have even been established, completely altering his timeline and converting the Nueva York of 2099 into an unrecognizable dystopia. During this time, Walker was able to make a second time gateway, thus enabling two-way time travel, and he even managed to hire Peter Parker as an employee just to keep an eye on him, eventually having anti-venom fitted with control chips in order to assist Spider-Man, a task he actually accomplished even despite the fact that Pete was warned ahead of time by Miguel O'Hara. But don't worry, Walker got what was coming to him when Miguel removed all of Anti-Venom's mind control chips and in a blind rage knocked himself, Walker, and Dr. Octavius into the time gate all at the same time, fusing the three together and forming the monstrous atrocity residing within the time stream itself. At number 3 is Professor Zoom, otherwise known as Reverse Flash. I'm sure Barry Allen's arch nemesis needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyway. The sociopathic professor known as Eobard Thwain was born about 420 something years from now. A designer baby genetically engineered to be good looking and highly intelligent, as is the protocol for all humans in the future. Dang, now I know I was born too early. Now despite his intelligence, he was forced by his parents to dedicate all of his time to watching his little brother instead of focusing on academics, and so he was ultimately denied entry to the program that would allow him to legally study the speed force. Something he does anyways leading to his arrest by his own backstabbing brother. But you see, Thwain was obsessed with being perceived as a hero and so, after his future self inevitably figured out a way to tap into the speed force, he went back in time to prevent his own brother from being born. And thus Thwain was able to focus completely on his studies and eventually got himself admitted into the Flash Museum. But when the leading professor researching the speed force refused to share his findings, his future self once again had to go back and make some edits to the timeline, allowing him to be appointed as a professor of the Flash Museum. Now I'm sure you already see the pattern here. Thwain doesn't get what he wants, his future self does some history rewriting, and then the Thwain of the past takes another step in the direction he wants to go in. This happens a few more times, like when he clapped his parents to prevent them from shutting down the museum, or when he clapped his crush's fiance and literally every man she's ever dated in an attempt to court her. And when that doesn't work, he gave up and just had his future self traumatize her as a child, rendering her mute and causing her to be institutionalized for the rest of her life. Now after finally tapping into the speed force, again thanks to his future self making it easy for him, he decided to take on the mantle and become the Flash of the 25th century, putting people in danger just so that he could play hero and save them. Now eventually he would end up resenting Barry Allen, but he realized that without Barry, he would have never known about the speed force's existence and gain access to its power. So instead of just eliminating the Flash, Zoom decided to make Barry's life a living hell while shattering countless timelines in the process. 
At number 2 is Nathaniel Richards. What if the smartest man alive was evil? Now while Reed Richards may not be, his half brother's future descendant definitely is. Also known as Iron Lad, Immortus, Scarlet Centurion, Rima Tut, Mr. Griffin, Doctor Doom, The Beast, Kid Immortus, Saint Nathaniel, Iron Prince, He Who Remains, and finally Kang the Conqueror is the descendant to Reed Richards. And not only is he one of the most convoluted characters in comic book history on account of his many alternate timeline versions of himself, but he's also quite possibly the single greatest threat to the Marvel multiverse, simply on account of his genius level intellect, which matches that of Reed Richards, the smartest man of his time. Yeah, that's right, brains is literally all this guy has going for him. No superhuman powers necessary for multiversal domination. All he needed to do was invent time travel and suddenly he could utilize any tool or being across time to aid in achieving his absolute conquest. At number 1, The Time Trapper. The mysterious nemesis to the Legion of Superheroes first appeared as the tyrannical warlord who exists at the end of time. Now, Even though he hates the Legion so much, he's actually responsible for their creation after designing them to fight his enemy, Mordu. Now, The Time Trapper is known for having set up the Iron Curtain of Time, a method which he employs to prevent time travelers from visiting the end of time and discovering his origins, which has led many to speculate his true identity. Brainiac 5 even theorized that The Time Trapper wasn't actually a person at all, but instead an entire sentient timeline rebelling against our own. Now, what distinguishes this entity from the rest of the contenders on this list is the Time Trapper's complete control over the flow of time. Not only is he able to create those aforementioned iron curtains as barriers to any would be time travelers, but he can also accelerate the aging of anyone of his choosing, even turning some to bones or ashes. But perhaps his most impressive feat is how he's able to take individual slices of time and form independent pocket dimensions with them. But that's not even the impressive part. It was revealed that one of these pocket universes was pruned of all life save for that on Earth and Krypton, meaning that he had eliminated from his copy all kinds of supremely powerful forces such as the new gods and the guardians of the universe, among many others. Now, Time travel may be cool and all, but it seems like it only breeds chaos and destruction. So let's just stick to the present, shall we? Or better yet, how about we take a trip to the past and stop all these villains from ever existing in the first place? Now, that is a time traveling adventure. I could get behind. Ladies and gents, that concludes our list of the top 10 villains who came from the future. As always, if there's a future villain who you think I've missed, and trust me, there's lots of them, feel free to let me know down in the comments which villains you'd like to see covered next time. This has been AJ with Top 10 Nerd, and I'll catch you in another video. Peace out, nerds.